Hey, this is Joel. I am putting together a drum kit for a friend of mine, and I'm getting ready to assemble this rack tom. I've got the lugs here. Um, and it occurred to me this is a good opportunity before I do so, before and after I do so, to demonstrate um, something that is kind of a fallacy that's really been promoted in recent years um, that I kind of wanted to dispel. Um, and I realize I'm going to step on some toes and probably make some people angry and probably get some hate mail and whatever. But um, nevertheless, I think this will clearly demonstrate the reality of what it is that I'm saying. And that is, you know, each shell does indeed have its own sort of inherent pitch. Right? And so the idea is that whatever that is, my son has perfect pitch. He could tell you what note that is. I don't. I have great relative pitch, but you got to give me a starting and then I can tell you what it is. Whatever pitch that is, if you tune the drum to it, so it is said, that's when the drum's going to sound its best. That's not actually true because right now, this drum has this pitch, the shell has this pitch, but there's no hardware on it. So let's put the hardware on it and see what happens. Mm. Okay, let's put the hardware on it and see what pitch it has then. All right, I have now put hardware on the drum, so it's got these nice, big, heavy cast lugs, right? These large Ludwig classic lugs. And these are old school lugs um, with springs in them, holding the bushings in place. So this is really good for the thump test because the bushings aren't gonna rattle like crazy like modern lugs do. So let's go back and listen to the pitch of the shell without anything on it. Mmm, where is it now? Mmm. So we went from hmm with no hardware to hmm with hardware. Now why is that? Because I added mass to the shell. Well, the lugs aren't part of the shell. No, but they're bolted to it. They're heavy. They're massive. They have mass in them. Um, and when you bolt them to the shell, so they literally are grabbing onto the shell, when the shell vibrates, they're going to vibrate too. They're restricting the shell's vibration. They're lowering the pitch of the shell. And adding mass does another thing too. It actually uh, requires more energy to excite the shell into motion or into vibration than a less massive shell, a lighter weight shell. Um, so when smaller drums and lighter weight thinner drums and lower mass tube lug hardware, you know, that kind of stuff, the lower the mass, the easier it is for the shell to resonate and to vibrate, basically. Um, and the more mass, the more energy it takes to get the same amount of vibration from it. So I have increased the amount of uh, energy required to get this thing singing, and I've lowered the pitch. So if I were to put a note on the inside of this shell saying, here's the pitch of the shell, putting the hardware on it just made that irrelevant. And what if I put eight lugs per side instead of six lugs per side? Same thing, I'm adding even more. So it's not really just about dimension. It's not even necessarily about the shell construction and thickness and the mass of the shell. There are so many factors that go into drum sound and I've been recording drums. I mean, nobody I guess knows who I am, but um, I've been recording drums for over 30 years, playing drums for over 40 years. So, um, and I've recorded every kind of drum that there is. And it's just interesting that after many years of doing it, I just started to kind of notice certain types of drums, certain types of materials and construction, uh, older drums, newer drums, very old drums versus older drums versus newer drums, the, 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 the tendencies or the trends in the manufacturing and how that affects the end product. I've seen videos on YouTube where people say, hey, that's a 12 inch Tom. This is a 12 by eight inch Tom. It's a 12 inch Tom. Oh, that sounds like a 12 inch Tom, you know, and, and they break it down to just dimension and, and head and tuning and edges, you know, things like that. All super critical stuff. Um, but, but there are so many other variables that really do matter, particularly given certain situations. Some things really matter when you're in a recording environment 
with very few microphones, or if you're in a recording environment with a ton of microphones, or if you're not recording and you're not even using mics or anything, you're in a live room, maybe there's no sound reinforcement. You're playing with like a little jazz combo or something. The kinds of drums that you use and the way that you tune them really, really do matter. Not just the way you tune them. The kinds of drums that you're using really will affect uh, how all of that works. So I'm going to start doing a series of videos really unpacking drum sounds. Why drums sound the way they do and kind of demunking, demunking, demunking. I'm going to demunk it. Debunking some of the myths uh, and some of the things that are really, really great marketing. Because that is sensational marketing to say, you know, here's the pitch of the drum shell tuned to that. That is great marketing because it does seem to kind of make sense. And nobody else really you know, was saying that certainly many years ago. So that was kind of a novel thing to say. Um, in reality, though, a quality drum can be tuned at a lot of different pitches, depending upon what you're wanting to do with it. Um, and the hardware absolutely matters. Um, you know, when this thing's ready to be played, it'll have heads on it, it'll have key rods and hoops and a mount and all that kind of stuff. So all of that's going to change the pitch of the shell as well. So this is just sort of my first sort of video to just kind of throw something out there, kind of mull it over. And I'm going to be following it up with a lot of other videos uh, coming up um, in the coming weeks. So if this is interesting to you, if you're a drummer or if you record drums and work with drums, if you're a tech for a drummer, whatever, um, if you're a drum manufacturer, I really do invite you to subscribe and check these things out because there are... You know, God love you. There are a lot of boutique drum manufacturers who make very, very high quality products because of the craftsmanship and the care and the materials that they use, but still don't fully understand why the drums sound the way they do. And um, there are reasons for all of that. And it's not crazy rocket science. It actually makes really, really rational, decent sense. It's all just kind of stuff that I picked up from decades of working with drums, tuning drums, recording drums, and trying to achieve certain sounds that I had in my head. Um, and then also playing live and working sound in live environments and all that kind of stuff too. So um, if that's interesting to you, please subscribe uh, and, uh, and please comment. Uh, be nice with your comments. Some of the stuff that I've said probably is going to irritate some people. I'm not meaning to be hyperbolic or incendiary in anything that I say. I just want to cut through the nonsense and just show that, you know, you know, putting lugs on it changed the pitch of the shell. So why do we care about what the pitch of the shell is? You know, so... Um, Thank you for watching this video and uh, please do subscribe. Feel free to comment um, and uh, make suggestions for future video topics. Uh, I'm going to get very much into the sound of drums, why drums sound the way they do, the various construction constructions of drums over the decades, over the years. Um, very, very thin shells from mid 20th century to the thicker shells of the late seventies throughout the eighties, and then getting into the thin rigid shell craze that we're still kind of in right now. Um, and the benefits and, and drawbacks of each, because there are, believe it or not, drawbacks to each, including what the rage is right now, some serious drawbacks in my opinion. Uh, so one man's opinion, um, happy to share it, uh, because I'm human and I like to express my opinion, you know. So anyway, if that's of interest to you, please uh, subscribe and I will be happy to have you along. Thanks for watching this video anyway. I hope that you are doing well. Take care.